London, let's go. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We're flying one of our favorite airlines, Aer Lingus, to London. Let's do it. Love this legroom. First stop is Dublin International Airport. We are familiar with this airport because we were just here about six months ago. Of course, all connecting flights pass through the duty-free shopping. We hop on our next plane and we're ready to go. This is a relatively quick and easy flight as it only takes about an hour and a half to arrive. We're now at the busiest airport in Europe, UK's London Heathrow. Fun fact, this is the seventh busiest airport in the world based on passenger traffic. However, as you can see, when we were here, it wasn't too bad. We made our way to the rideshare pickup and then we're off to the hotel. Coming from the US, it's always interesting to be in a bright hand drive vehicle. Look at this massive Audi dealership. This map is gonna give you an idea of how much walking we're gonna do. This is gonna be a street level view to show you some sights and highlights. London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom, and it is a 21st century city stretching back to the Roman times. Interesting to note, this clock tower Big Ben took over 15 years to build. Historians also note that it's miraculous that it survived World War II. Just across the street is the River Thames, and that's a waterway that flows through central London. Crossing over a bridge and taking a two minute walk, and we're under the London Eye. This is definitely a touristy area. There's things for the kids to do. There's some street food, some shops, and some really cool sights to see. Now we're at the Tower of London, His Majesty's Royal Palace. The castle was also used as a prison in the 1100s. Next to it is the Tower Bridge, and some people actually mistake this for the London Bridge. This bridge was originally constructed to connect 39% of London's population that lived east of the London Bridge. The bridge is 800 feet, 240 meters long. Based on the research that I did, what I found is as of 2022, London had 8.9 million people as far as population is concerned. Walking around though, we felt most people were found in the tourist attraction areas. The location that we're at now is called the Sky Garden. This is London's highest public garden. It's a vibrant social space with 360 degree views of the city skyline. This is a 38 story building, 160 meters or 525 feet tall. The city built and opened these gardens in 2015 to reduce urban carbon dioxide emissions. There are 575 apartments here and you can also make dinner or lunch reservations if you'd like to. After this, we're going to head over to Trafalgar Square. This area is actually visited by over 15 million tourists a year. This is basically an open space, a public square in the city of Westminster. Up top in the very middle is a statue of Admiral Nelson. The square is a good place to visit because it's surrounded by museums, galleries, cultural spaces, and historic buildings. Throughout the year, you'll find cultural celebrations, commercial events, rallies, demonstrations, and even photographic shoots here. By the way, Nelson's column is 169 feet high or 52 meters. After this, we're heading into early evening, so we decided to head back towards the hotel. As you can imagine, you can see Big Ben from many points in the city. London's a beautiful city. Say you wanted to live here, it would be about £4,950 for a family of four and that's before rent. The next day we got up and decided to walk through Strutton Ground Market. You'll find chicken, beef, halal, vegetables and more here. Great variety of cuisine in a small area. On our way walking to the next stop we saw this place. We're not sure if it's a hotel or residential but we had to walk down the drive to take a look. The grounds definitely look very impressive. Now we're just about 10 minutes away from our next stop, which is Buckingham Palace. As you probably know, this is a royal residence in London at the administrative headquarters of the monarch of the United Kingdom. No changing of the guard today. We will show you the park behind this gate in just a bit. This area is often the center of state occasions and royal hospitality. It has also been the focal point for the British people at times of national rejoicing and mourning. This is the park that was behind the gates that we showed you earlier, and it's called Green Park. The tree-lined canopy looked beautiful. It started to rain a little bit, but we kept going. We saw this open-air mall with a roof, so we had to check it out. There were a variety of different type of stores to your left and your right. It was kind of like a mist type of rain, but everybody seemed unbothered as they carried on their day. We have now made it to a road junction and public space of London's West End. This area is called Piccadilly Circus. This area is considered to be a major shopping and entertainment district. It is a hub for tours and the hop on hop off bus. Next up, we're gonna walk through London's Chinatown. This area is also located in Westminster and is bordering Soho. As you can imagine, you'll find restaurants, bakeries, supermarkets, souvenir shops, and other Chinese run businesses. And like most Chinatowns, they also have the China Gate. Now we're gonna leave this location and head down back towards the hotel. Slightly easier of a walk because it was downhill. This is a different area of Green Park. 
we packed up our stuff, called an Uber, and we're on our way. After about two days in London, we're now at St. Pancras International Railway Station. It's called International because it provides service from Belgium, France, and the Netherlands. St. Pancras contains four groups of platforms on two levels accessed by the main concourse at ground level. We got here a little early because I wanted to walk around and see everything that they had to offer. There are a variety of restaurants and even some duty-free shops. I couldn't film it, but there were two areas of screening before we could get to the boarding area. Okay, now it's time to board, and the train that we're riding is called the Eurostar. It is assigned seating. You purchase a seat that you sit in, but because it was kind of late, we were able to sit wherever we wanted. This is considered a bullet train, very fast and speeds up to 200 miles an hour. If you're still watching, you've now made it to the end of part one of this European trip. Next up is Paris and the Olympics. As usual, I would like to say thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the next one.